Hard to believe 1996 is almost 25 years ago, and we produced the most 1996 thing ever made by mankind. Don't bring me here anymore, right? Space Jam. As you might have picked up from watching my videos, I'm a big Looney Tunes guy, but not a big Space Jam guy. I love Jordan, I love Bugs, I love those commercials they did together, but I was looking for something a little more funny and clever than... <laughs> nice butt! Yeah. Granted, I've learned to appreciate it like many people do as a funny nostalgic time capsule, but to me, it was a huge missed opportunity to create something classic. And in my opinion, the biggest missed opportunity was the introduction of a brand new Looney Tune, Lola. I mean, holy shit, a new Looney Tune after years of the same cast. And not only that, she was female. I mean, who did we have before? Granny? That blue bonnet chicken from Foghorn Leghorn? Finally, to the official Looney Tunes roster, we can get a character as good as Babs or Slappy or Dot. It was kinda nice it wasn't gonna be a sausage fest anymore. But in the film, she was very, well, 1996. Her character traits included being hot, uh, um, being hot, a general hot base persona. Ooh, he hot. Don't ever do that again, Tweety. I mean, her looniest character trait was that she didn't like being called doll. Don't ever call me doll. How dare you objectify me as I objectify myself every moment I get. The tragedy is, years later, they would turn her into a pretty funny character. Better writers and SNL alumni Kristen Wiig would breathe all new life into her and make her, appropriately, loony. She was chipper, but insane. Selfish, but thought she was doing good. Obsessive, but... No, no, just obsessive. She had more of an identity outside of just... hot. Well, with a new Space Jam in production, sure to be the most 2021 thing ever to come out of 2021, nobody's really sure what version of Lola they're going to go with. So I want to give an idea of what Space Jam would be like if they attempted to make Lola a funny, interesting character. I'll be nice and keep everything else mostly the same, the initial plot, time period, and characters, but give Lola the introduction a true new Looney Tune deserves. This is how I think Space Jam would be if Lola was funny. I guess if we're gonna do this, we might as well cast the Lola that actually attempted to be funny. So in this version, I'm leaning more towards the Kristen Wiig portrayal. It's not exactly her down to every little detail, but I think it's a funnier model to go off of. Alright, so the film starts off exactly the same. Minus maybe the R. Kelly song that might not age well. Swackhammer still wants the Looney Tunes for his theme park, Jordan is still playing baseball, and Bugs is still running away from Elmer. The only difference is Lola is introduced a lot earlier, putting up flyers when Bugs crashes into her. Aren't you Bugs Bunny? Yeah, that's what the IRS is always asking me. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I... She grabs his hand, refusing to let go. Oh my goodness, I'm your biggest fan. I mean, what's up, Doc? How did you even come up with that? Eh, yeah, it just kind of came to me. Uh, do you mind? I'm kind of in a hoi- You just came up with it. Of course you did! That's why you're the funniest rabbit alive and I'm nothing, just a pile of dirt. No, lower than dirt. Dirty dirt. No, lower than dirty dirt. It's lower than dirty dirt. Nothing. I am nothing. Bugs is amazed at how tight her grip is as she doesn't even flinch when he struggles. Eh, look doll, I appreciate the nice voice, but I'm kind of in a life or death situation here. Huh? She turns and sees Elmer running towards them, aiming his rifle at Bugs. Ooh, I got you now, you askawi. Oh, one second. She takes out a giant wooden arrow and places it in front of her. It reads, Bugs went that away. Elmer falls for it despite Bugs literally standing in front of him. Oh, thank you, miss. I almost made a fool out of myself. Uh... He takes off in the direction the arrow was pointing. Bugs is impressed. Hey, thanks, Toots. You're all right. Actually, I'm Lola. Unless you think all right is funnier, I'm completely okay with changing my name to all right. It, no, Lola's fine. Well, if you ever need anything, just ask. Come to my stand-up? Um, Wonderful! It's at the Comedy Club, Termite Terrace. It'll be my hilarious debut. Maybe one day I'll be saying, what's up, Doc? Oh, not that I could ever replace you. It was just a generalization. Please spare me, oh humble bugs! Um, yes, bad. Woohoo! That's why you're a legend. See you there! She hands him a flyer with all the info and takes off tapping her feet. Bugs Bunny is coming to my show! Bugs Bunny is coming to my show! Hey, you! Elmer returns, pointing his gun back at Bugs. Tataway was whacking in specific directions. What kind of a ball one do you take me for? Yeah, a flat one. What do you mean, a flat one? A spaceship lands on Elmer, revealing the Nerdlucks. This once again is like in the movie. The Nerdlucks try to take the Looney Tunes prisoner, but they trick them into a game of basketball. The Nerdlucks go and steal the talents of several NBA players, transforming themselves into the Monstars.
Meanwhile, Bugs is at the comedy club sitting with several of the Looney Tunes, including Daffy, who is not happy to be there. And just why did you drag me to this abysmal hole in the wall? Eh, don't be so dramatic. It is literally a hole in the wall! A wider shot reveals the club is indeed in a giant hole on a wall. Yeah, I owe this gal one. And who knows, maybe she'll be funny. We never go anywhere I want to go. Oh, not this again. The show starts as Lola is announced onto the stage. An adequate applause greets her. Unfortunately, her stand-up is terrible. Yeah, I know the title is What If Lola Was Funny, but bear with me, it makes sense. Hi everyone! Okay, so why didn't the rabbit cross the road? Bugs and Daffy look concerned. Because it wasn't a rabbit. It was a chicken! Crickets chirp. Because, you know, with the spin on the classic joke, you see the original joke is why did the chicken cross the road? Oh no, she isn't. She is. She's explaining the joke. So by saying it wasn't a rabbit but a chicken, it echoes back to the classic formula but with a surprising outcome and that equals humor. Crickets continue to chirp until even they're sick of the show. I'll quit your chirping, Harold, and let's go! The crickets leave. Um, how about a knock-knock joke? Somebody stop this. In fact, why don't you start? The entire audience talks in unison. Knock-knock! Knock, knock. Who's there? Somehow the audience all has the exact same joke planned. An interrupting cow! Oh, I wasn't planning on, um... An interrupting cow? No! She stands in disbelief. Wow, that really didn't go as I planned. Um, did I mention I'm a puppeteer too? She pulls out a small puppet of herself. Bugs and Daffy are about to crack. Suddenly the Monstars burst in. One of the creatures approaches the mic. This thing on. Good. Attention, Looney Tunes! We are here to enslave you all! Oh, thank heaven! Seriously? It's a small price to pay compared to her jokes. The majority of this part goes like in the movie. The Monstars say unless they beat them at basketball, as they agreed, the Tunes will be their slaves. Bugs and Daffy grab Jordan and don't believe him when he says he's a baseball player now. They put out an ad for basketball players and everybody who tries out is awful. But then Lola walks through the door, met with immediate rejection. Ow. No. Excuse me, I'd like to try out. Eh, no offense, Lola, but have you ever played basketball before? Well, have you? I guess not. Then we're all in the same boat. Anyway, I thought I could distract them with my incredible joke telling. A guy walks into a bar. Did he duck? No. He jumped over the bar. Everybody's silent. You get it? It's taking a popular scenario and spinning it on its- Look, sister, maybe you can use your jokes to convince everyone to jump off a cliff. Everybody laughs, Lola gets angry. She grabs the ball from Daffy and starts dribbling it down the court. I see. You want me to act loony and dribble the ball with my feet. She does exactly that while walking on her ears. Then you want me to do something zany, like using my tail to hop over my opponents. She does that as well, but signals the rest of the tunes to stop her to see if she can get past them. She thwarts them all without even paying attention. Then, you want me to do something wacky, like dress like an Irish dancer, have everybody join in, and then helicopter to the basket with my ears making a slam dunk. She does every single one of those things, leaving everybody dumbfounded. Well, sorry. That's just not my style. Jordan smiles. Oh, you're in. What? Lola, that was amazing! Just bring that talent to the court and we'll win this thing for sure! Really? You thought I was good? Hey, if you got Mikey's seal of approval, you must be amazing! Oh! The baseball guy, right? Jordan doesn't know how to take that. Nevertheless, the players are picked and the game is on. Once again, everything goes mostly like in the film, except instead of the magic juice, or whatever that was, the conflict starts with Lola getting stage fright. She walks into the stadium, terrified. Wow, well, I've never performed in front of this many people before. Don't worry, Lola. Just go out there and have some fun. Yes, and don't act like the fate of our lives isn't in the balance at all! You're not helping, Daffy. Lola gets in position, the whistle is blown, and she's tossed the ball. One of the Monstars heads towards her and she's immediately intimidated. She quickly goes into her stand-up. Think of your act. Um, uh, oh, oh yeah. Why did the rabbit not cross the road? All the Monstars stop in confusion. Because it wasn't a rabbit. It was a chicken. The Monstars still look confused. Because, you know, it's a spin on the classic joke. They smash her into the ground and steal the ball. Yeah, none of this bug saving her. She gets flattened like any other Looney Tunes character. The rest of her teammates don't do much better. Jordan constantly tries shouting out advice. Pass it to Elmer. Pass it to Elmer. Daffy, block that one. Porky, what kind of defense is that? They all get annihilated. In the locker room, Jordan is a little tougher on them than in the original. Not yelling, but still more angry. What were y'all thinking out there? You act like you never played basketball before. 
We haven't played basketball before. Well, you better act like you have. Your livelihood is on the line. Oh, tough talk from a guy who plays baseball now. Joran gives Daffy an angry look. Daffy points to Porky. He said it. Joran gets frustrated and walks out. Eh, hey Mikey, don't you think you're a little hard on them? He goes into the other room to see Lola sitting alone on one of the benches. Oh, sorry. I'll go somewhere else. No, it's okay. He sits down next to her. You know, this really isn't their expertise. They're more entertainers than all-stars. I know. Sometimes I forget that. I don't. They're all so funny and talented. And now, I'm not a good comedian or basketball player. That ain't true, Lola. I've seen you out there. You're wild and zany and make a lot of people laugh. But that's not joke telling. That's just being silly. But that's who you are. But I don't want to be that. I want to be something better. Something special. If you're bringing joy to people by being who you are, that is special. That's your true calling. Lola lets his words sink in. Huh. I see what you're saying. Kind of like how you discovered baseball was your true calling. Jordan doesn't know how to answer. He thinks for a moment. I think we all lose track of what our calling is sometimes. Yeah. Maybe we can all figure it out tonight. Maybe. They both get back to the tunes with a new strategy. Okay, guys. New plan. Just be loony. What? I was focusing more on what you're not rather than what you are. And you guys are the looniest tunes the world has ever seen. Yeah. Those goons out there don't know what comedy is. If we just act like our loony selves, it'll throw them off their guard. Well, that counts you out, sister. Hey, I know I can do this. You just have to give me another chance. They all look to Bugs. You're the all-star in this field, Bugs. You think she's ready? Lola looks at Bugs with big puppy dog eyes. The more he thinks it over, the bigger her eyes get. Until a wide shot reveals her eyes are so big they're touching the ceiling. Eh, yeah, I think she's ready. Her eyes deflate and fall to the ground. Phew, being loony is torture on your contacts. Come on, guys. Let's head out there and show them what we got. The game goes mostly as you would imagine. The tunes act incredibly loony, throwing the monsters off their game, and the ball is handed to either Jordan or Bugs and Lola, who don different goofy costumes and different personalities to distract them while scoring points. As before, it's one more basket and the Looney Tunes win. We have to do something they won't be expecting. But what? We've used up all our looniest tricks! Yeah, not all of us. They all look at Jordan. Hold it, guys. I can't. They won't be expecting it, Doc. You're our only hope! I believe you have it in you, Michael. He looks down at Lola, remembering the talk they had. Her eyes once again start to grow big. Too big. Okay, you don't have to do that routine again. Good. There are some ceiling fans that wouldn't have been kind to me. Yeah, all right, Doc. We'll distract them and then get the ball to you. It's all or nothing, guys! They all put their hands in and get back into the game. Lola grabs the ball and proceeds to do a cheerleading routine. The Monstars, of course, get caught up and join in. Bugs drives in in a mail scooter, grabbing the ball. He passes it to Jordan. Special delivery! Jordan grabs the ball and, like in the film, his arm stretches out even with the Monstars trying to hold him back. He discovers his inner tune, makes the basket, and the day is won. Everybody cheers and celebrates. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mikey. You know, you ain't too bad at this basketball thing. So I've been told. So I guess it's back to the same old homestead, huh? Well, maybe not exactly the same. Cut to Jordan arriving back home, and, as you'd imagine, he goes back to playing basketball. The tunes are seen once again watching Lola stand up, only this time she includes a lot more anvils and mallets into the act, making the crowd go nuts. Bugs congratulates her on a great show. Yeah, not bad. Well, I had a great teacher. Yeah? Myself! Bugs gives her a look. And all my supportive friends, I guess. So, eh, uh, I was wondering, eh... Uh... Yes? I was, eh, maybe curious if you wanted to, eh... Yes? Suddenly Elmer appears again. There you are! Time to pick up where we left off! Bugs holds up an arrow like before that reads, We went that away. Well, this seems it we familiar, but thank you regardless. So you went that away? They both nod and Elmer takes off again. Hey, not bad. Well, I had a good teacher. Hey, look, on the TV! They see Jordan playing basketball once again. Hmm, he gave up his true calling of baseball. I think he'll be alright. They watch the game together and the credits roll. So there you go. Not only is there much more of an arc and build-up for both Lola and Jordan, but it finally allows a potentially funny character to be funny. 
But who knows, maybe this would have been a disaster and I would have doomed Lola from day one. What do you guys think? Is Lola fine the way she was? Or should they have given her more laughs? Is there anything you would change in Space Jam or do you think it's already the perfect time capsule? Whatever your thoughts, thanks for watching and continue to keep the Looney Tunes name alive.